coming. Uh, for those of you who have been told that there is no British Constitution, or think that there isn't, well, I can assure you that there is. Uh, the Queen has said as much, her press secretary, Sir Robin Gandrin, Jack Straw, various constitutional experts like John Bingley, Mike Burke, John Hurst. Um, back in 1250, King John signed the Treaty of Magna Carta. This was the guarantee of the fundamental rights and freedoms of people. The Constitution is the guarantee of those freedoms. It is the restraint on the state, on the monarch, on the government, on how they may rule us. Because we invest our personal freedom and sovereignty in the sovereign, and the sovereign is there to take care of us. It's a two-way deal. We keep them in place, protect them, they protect us and our sovereign rights. When the Treaty of Nice was put forward in 2000, several hundred thousand people wrote to the Queen and urged her not to sign because it would destroy the Constitution, the common law and all our rights and freedoms which we've been used to for a long, long time. A group of peers, some 60 odd of them, got together and formed a quorum uh, under the Protocols of Magna Carta 1215 and they created a Barons Committee of 25. Uh, they constructed a petition, signed it, and appointed four of their number to hand it to the Queen at Buckingham Palace, which they did. Now, under the protocols of Magna Carta, the Sovereign then has 40 days to redress the grievances which are being presented to that Sovereign. Uh, the Queen failed to do so, and the first parts of the Treaty of Nice were signed. 39 areas of control were handed over, and this November, November the 1st, another 43 areas of control will be handed over. This means the almost certain total destruction of everything that we know. We will have armed foreign police here controlling our police. Common law will go, jury trials will go, constitutional safeguards will go. This is going to be replaced by a European Charter on Fundamental Rights, which is quite nice to look at. But if you look at Article 52 of that, you will find that the state purports to give itself the right to abolish arbitrarily, without notice, any and all state-given rights. I don't think this is a good swap. We've got fundamental rights and freedoms which we are born with. They're inalienable and unalienable. That means that nobody can put a lien on them. Can't say that your freedom depends on you paying me 20 quid. It doesn't work like that. They're ours, given by God. Every one of us has them. So what happened was that the 40 days passed. We did not get what we wanted. And so the Barons Committee said that the conditions necessary to justify the procedure of Article 61 have been satisfied and they invoke lawful rebellion. What we have to do is, we take our allegiance from the Crown, that's not treason because allegiance is to the office of sovereign and not the current holder of the office. We then transfer our allegiance to the Barons Committee and we are, from that point on, lawfully in rebellion against the Crown. Nothing we are doing is unlawful, illegal, bad, nasty, or in any way criminal. We are acting completely 100% within the law. Very few of us who have done this are actually getting any hassle from the state. They don't know how to deal with us. We're not committing any crime. They're the ones committing crime. They're the ones who have reason to be afraid. So, like Sandy, I'm not a professional here. I'm not trained for this. I'm doing it because I have to. I'd much rather be back in my garden with my vegetables. <laughs> my grandson has two grandsons. I like to be sitting there with them in the garden. I don't want to be doing this. I'm not made for it. I'm not built for it. I'm getting to be an old man now. My battles are 40 years ago when I was a soldier. So what we're looking at is the loss of our national independence and the erosion of our ancient rights, freedoms and customs. And these are all under the terms of the Treaty of Nice. 
And to give me a minute while I try to see this, my memory is not all that it could be. So we have all these peers who signed their names. The committee of four was uh, various lords, uh, Hammond of DL, Rutland, Ashbourne, and Mazarin Ferrard. The articles that are, sorry, the articles that are particularly uh, putting us at risk here, which I have marked and now cannot find, I'm Article 24, there we go. Article 24, transform the EU into an independent state with powers to enter into treaties with other states, which would then be binding on all member states. Article 23 allows the EU to appoint its own representatives in other countries effectively with ambassadorial status. <laughs> I told you I wasn't professional. You just have to screw up with me for a minute. Article 191 assumes the EU the right to lay down regulations governing political parties at European level and withdraw or prevent the funding of political parties which do not contribute to forming a European awareness. This is a restriction on free speech. Articles 29 and 31 establish common policing and judicial cooperation. That's Eurojustice followed by Europol, armed French, German, Spanish, Italian, Greek, Polish police coming here to arrest us. They have guns, they've got diplomatic immunity, and something which is not a crime here, but might be a crime in, say, Poland. You can come here, arrest you, take to Poland, and put you in jail. Mm. Eventually, of course, it will be, free speech will be a crime throughout Europe. Article 61 allows matters of justice and home affairs to be agreed by qualified majority voting. These articles open the door to the imposition of corpus juris on the UK. And Article 31 specifically calls for cross border policing and prosecution and the removal of conflicts of jurisdiction. The deployment of armed Europol law enforcement officers on the streets of Britain. These were originally taken up in Article 280, but because of criticism, it mysteriously disappeared. But the parts of it have reappeared in other articles. Article 17 establishes a common foreign and defence policy. Our troops are only command of the command of Germans, Poles, Ukrainians, whoever. We are losing the UK veto in all these important areas. We will not be allowed to make any decisions. Now, the Charter of Fundamental Rights, signed at Biarritz in 2000, proposed to give the EU the power to abolish them at will, effectively making them meaningless. The whole proposition that the state has the right to grant and abolish fundamental human rights, i.e. those we inherit at birth and hold in trust for future generations, is not only absurd, but also contrary to Magna Carta 1215, the Declaration of Rights 1688 and the Bill of Rights. Now, Magna Carta was last invoked in 1688 when the Bishop of Salisbury invited William of Orange and Mary Stuart to take the throne of England uh, because King James was trying to turn the country Catholic. It failed and there was a popular uprising. So Magna Carta does exist. The Queen admits it, Jack Straw admits it, they all admit it. This constitution is our solution. Without the Constitution, we have no rights. We're slaves, and Agenda 21 will roll out. So our solution is, we must get the police to make an arrest. A hundred police stations have had complaints of prison put in. We cannot get the police to act. We need to put pressure on the police. The only thing that's going to stop this November change over this new management system coming in is if we can get a criminal complaint active in the courts because the treaty is a civil matter and all civil matters must take back seat until the criminal matters are resolved. So Magna Carta 1215, Declaration of Rights and the Bill of Rights. This is the basis of our constitution that protects all our freedoms. 
If you want to stop Agenda 21, if you want to keep your private property and your car and your nice little cottage in the country, you've got to get behind Magna Carta and the Lawful Rebellion. Nothing else is going to work. We've been sold out by criminals in government, we've got corrupt courts, and we've got a police force who's not doing their job. We need to put pressure on them. And we're here to do it locally. We put the council on notice last week at the council meeting. Uh, I presented this eight-page document to them, gave them a computer disk with half a dozen YouTube videos on it, quite short, fully explaining Agenda 21, how it's been worked, and what it means to every single person living on the planet today. So, I wrote uh, an oath to the Lords about three, three years or so back, put it up on the internet, um, there's about 5,000 hits it's had. A lot of people have downloaded it and using it. Uh, Dave has a Facebook group with more than 2,000 people now on it. Uh, he's got the oath up there. People have been taking it, sending it to uh, Rod Rutland. He's the one we're concentrating on at the moment. And if any of you think that this is a joke, you need to think again. If you think going into Europe is going to be a wonderful thing, you need to think again. If you think we don't have a constitution, then you're already dead. Because nothing is going to save you. I entered Love Rebellion several years ago. I used it very briefly when the police came after me for a, an accidental speeding fine. Um, they sent me a notice of intended prosecution. I sent it back. Uh, they sent me another one. So then I sent them a treason notice. And I told them that they were acting in fraud at the very least. They were acting in misprision of treason, compounding a crime. And if they pursued it, then I would be pursuing them. They backed off, and I've heard nothing since. I also had an invitation, they call it summons, to the United Magistrates Court, which I promptly threw in the bin, and they haven't pursued me. Dave has had much more extensive experience with this. I've been lucky. I've only had uh, one or two small maps to deal with and they backed off very quickly. When you stand in love for rebellion, you're the most powerful person in the country. Absolutely no doubt about it at all. These people are the criminals and they're afraid of us. They're not afraid of me, I'm just one little old guy. But they're afraid of this room full of people. And they're even more afraid of a time full of people in a country and a nation. If people really understood Agenda 21 and what was happening in November, these people would be fleeing for their lives. They'd be getting dragged out, beaten to death, and hanged on that process. I don't particularly want to see that, but we do have to stop them. All your children, your friends, your family, every single thing you know, every person you know or about, even heard of, they're going down. We're going down. We have access to requirements, not wanted on the voyage. We are the redundant working class. They've got driverless cars, automated factories, self care cut down. They're putting in automation so they don't need people. And the only way this is going to stop is through the rebellion. The English speaking peoples are the only people on the planet that can do anything about this. And it's up to us. I'd just like to say one little thing that I wrote on the net a couple of years ago. I can't remember who I stole it from, but I did steal it. We are the people. We are the only people. There are no other people. If not us, who? If not how, when? Because we are the people. And there are no other people. So, I'd like to hand you to Dave now. He's got a lot more to need to say, much more important, I think. Just remember, you have a constitution, it is the solution. Hello, Put pressure on the council. How long have we got? Till 10. How long have we got? No, no, no. <laughs> to do something. Um, First of November is the handover. Pretty quick. They're sneaking this stuff in through the back door. None of this is in the mainstream media. There's only one mainstream media journalist has mentioned this, a guy called Ian Mackay, or Mackey, I'm not sure how he pronounces it. Uh, all the rest of the mainstream media are very, very quiet on it. 
So, constitution is the solution. You need to pressure your council, get out of agenda 21, pressure the police to make an arrest, do your job. Excuse me, That's do you, it. you mean the police should arrest the Queen? No, the Queen is beyond arrest. We need to arrest any member of Parliament, any of the cabinet, anybody who voted for Europe, anybody who's working towards integration with Europe. This is treason. It's against the Constitution. The Constitution wasn't made by Parliament. It was made in 1688, the Bill of Rights and the Declaration of Rights, 1688 by a convention of the people. When William Prince of Orange came here, he took the, take the floor. It was his condition that a Bill of Rights would be in place so he could not take the job. So a convention of the people from all over England gathered. They sat for six months, flashed out the Constitution. It was signed and became part of the coronation of that. Now there is one other thing for those religious people, that the Articles of Religion, section 37, specifically forbids any foreign power to have control in this country. So, Article 61, Magna Carta, the right to rebel against a tyrannical sovereign. And that's what we have now. So, when these changes carried in November, will that affect the legal standing of this thing called capitalist in Asia, the Admiralty Law and the Maritime Admiralty Law a situation where at the minute you can say I stand in the sea and I will be treated by the law of the land. But are they changing the law of the land status? Yes, they in are. November? Right, for those who do not know, uh, we are labouring under a parallel legal system. The bad boys have created a legal system which is running in parallel with the existing common law legal system. And they have created the title such as Mr. This is a maritime title. If you answer to that title, you're, you're agreeing that you are the legal fiction that they have created to represent you. That legal fiction is represented in all capital letters. It comes out of Roman civil law. Now what this guy's just asked is about capitis diminutia maxima. There are three levels. Capitis dimin diminutia minima, media and maxima. When your name is in all capitals, it means that you have suffered a total loss of all rights. You can be imprisoned, enslaved, executed. That's why on gravestones, it's always capital letters. You're dealing with a dead thing cooperation and the fiction. All that will change. The common law will go and we will have corpus juris. They operate a thing called a precautionary principle, <coughs> which means you're guilty until you're presumed innocent. Napoleonic law, inquisitorial. We have an accusatorial system which is operated by reason, argument and debate to establish the truth. This will all change bit by bit in November. Affects all of us. So, thank you for that little uh, 10 50 minutes you've given me. Uh, the Constitution, there are lots of books on it, lots of YouTube videos. John Bingley is absolutely fantastic. You can Google it, YouTube it, and you can educate yourself a bit more on the Constitution than I can give you here in 15 20 minutes. Okay, thank you very much, thank you. and you'll be day. <laughs> well, thank you, John, for that uh, rundown of the uh, basis of the Constitution. Now, I've got quite a lot that I want to get through in the next uh, 45 minutes. So, first of all, I'm going to have to state a disclaimer here. I'm not, I can't really give you legal or lawful advice. All I can do is give you um, a process of what I used, because I, I, I used Article 61 to um, stop all demands against me, which was a court summons. Fines. Um, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about that as I go along. First of all, I want to uh, just briefly go um, talk about controlled opposition groups. There are a couple, um, especially the Reset, which you may have heard about. Um, there's a very 
a short film here, about 10 minutes long, which was created by the UK Column, which just explains a little bit about the reset. I'm going to play a, maybe 10 minutes of it, so you can just bear with me with that. Uh, calling for uh, a reference for, for a series of references. 
represents. And he's going to start off in the schools to reset people's minds on what Magna Carta is. Now, it might seem like a small thing, uh, mere semantics, uh, but the tagline for the British Constitution Group is and always be, uh, always has been, to reassert the Constitution. Now, there's only three letters difference between reassert and reset, uh, but those extra letters, in fact, do make all the difference. A reset means switching off and starting all over again. Now, Alex G will be proud of me for making uh, this analogy, but isn't uh, isn't the case this is exactly what they did with Star Trek recently, uh, a reset, a reboot. Uh, it ended up with a whole new timeline, a whole new story, and that's what reset is about, changing, it's about change. So to reassert, on the other hand, is about uh, making a statement, uh, making a statement about what the principles are that this nation was uh, based on and governed by, uh, and uh, a reassertion of those principles, not a change of those principles. And of course those principles still stand, even though they've been treasonless and treasonously trampled underfoot. Um, so this is what we're talking about here, a reinstatement, a, a reassertion, not a reset. And those, by the way, who have been trampling the Constitution underfoot, uh, including the monarch, um, who's the British for coronation oath, um, should probably be prosecuted uh, for treason. Um, so, um, getting back to uh, Matthew's article then, um, he really is saying that um, the piece in the UK column is just a head piece, no more than mudslinging. Uh, I would say that it's not. Um, we've quite intentionally stayed away from mudslinging and infighting over, uh, over the years uh, because there are bigger issues at stake, and this is one of those bigger issues. That was just to give you an idea of uh, how they're going to reset everything, and the reset is all part of that agenda. So it's not just something that's come out of uh, nowhere, someone's just created it out of their mind. This is a global agenda. Now there's other opposition, control opposition groups, one called We The People, you might have heard of them, many haven't, but they're pretending to stand uh, um, under, uh, in, common, in, uh, in law for rebellion. And I, I went onto their group page on Facebook and instructed them that, in fact, what they're doing is because they want people to come along and petition the Queen. And I said, well, you know, this has already been done, you don't have to do that again. Um, I put over another, a couple of more points which were basically double think of what they were trying to do, and I just got blocked. They, they blocked me, and anyone that, I got a couple of more people to go up and ask the same question, they just block them. So be, be aware there are controlled opposition groups out there um, because they, they realise that Law for Rebellion is a very powerful movement and they, don't, they want to keep people uh, you know, dumbed down about this. Right, so that's basically covered the controlled opposition. There's more groups, but we won't go into any more of that. Um, so why do we support the barons? I get a lot of people saying to me, why should I support some baron? You know, they, 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 these, are, these are lords and you know, well, you know, they, they have a, the idea that these are like all criminals for some reason. Well, the barons petitioned the, the, the Queen, they, they stood up for us. They invoked Article 61, which has been lawfully invoked. They, they cannot be denied. Um, so they stood up and uh, did this for the people to, because lawful rebellion is, is, has been invoked by them and it's for the people to use. It's for us to use. And in fact, it's unlawful not to use it. You know, it's unconstitutional not to use it. And we all have lawful excuse not to pay taxes, okay? We know we're in a, a very corrupt regime, and uh, if you don't do things correctly, they're gonna come down on you. Right. So um, I, I uh, entered into lawful rebellion myself about five years ago. I'll go into a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, I just want to talk a very small, uh, just want to talk very quickly about personal sovereignty. Um, we are all sovereign. We, uh, this is a sovereign nation. We have national sovereignty, so we're a nation of sovereigns. We're a nation of kings and queens. This is what makes us all equal. Um, every one of us in the country are equal under the law, unless you're in a public service position, whereas you stand under the sovereign people. You're in service to us. Most people seem to forget that we have a system of service in this country, not a system of uh, corporate dictatorship. And but we, but we have to stand firm for our sovereignty, otherwise we're, we're, we're going to lose it. And if we lose it, there's nothing but slavery. And, and I mean, this is going to be harsh. 
You know, we haven't seen anything yet. We think our, our governments are bad, we wait until, we, until the European Union take over. And Europe, are, you know, diplomatic immunity and guns, they can uh, arrest you and detain you without charge indefinitely. You know, this is really serious stuff. Okay, um, I'm rushing through this a little bit, but uh, uh, the law for rebellion movement is peaceful. It's, it, it's not about um, waging war on the ground, okay? Which is which is actually what um, it has been depicted as, and it, it is in a way. But it's about uh, standing by the law um, peacefully, but defiantly, and demanding that our public servants do their job, like the police, who are not doing their job. You know, I. Uh, many of us have tried to get them to um, uh, investigate the crimes of treason and common law, and they won't do it because the, the people above them are instructing them not to do it. Okay, so we're really uh, struggling to get the police to act. Um, I entered this law for a like I said, five years ago. Um, what I did, very briefly, was I, 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 I sent affidavits to, the, to Buckingham Palace to, uh, I gave her 40 days because I was in double thing, didn't realise that it had already been done, didn't know how to do that, so you don't have to do that. Um, I then sent notices to DBLA, deregistering my private conveyance, my truck, um, they, they weren't very happy about that, <laughs> I have to say. Um, but I, I, I did due process of law, so the so notice of intent and, um, and whatnot. And I actually did deregister it under the constitutional laws of the country, but they didn't accept it. So what I did next was I sent a notice of lawful objection to the local chief of uh, police of the Wiltshire area, um, <laughs> Chief Inspector Ian Copas, who and I entered into some communications with him. Now I do have some templates of the notices from one club. If you just give us a hand with this. It's not my computer. I'm totally innocent. Okay, um Which was it one time? Right, uh, well I'm gonna start off with actually I'm gonna start off with the oath of allegiance to the barons. Click on there. That should be it. Okay, what's going on here? Can't be read for some reason. It can't be read for some reason. Great. Sorry about this. Okay. <coughs> it might be class. Ah. Here we are. <laughs> okay. So, I just wanted to put up... <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got the code either, guys, so... <laughs> Gary, can you just operate this? <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> We're really professional, you know. We can see As you can time. see, yeah. <laughs> hey, that might say. How do you make it go full screen? Yeah. Get somebody that knows what they're doing. Wow. <laughs> right. <laughs> Bloody Microsoft. I can't afford it on the peasant. And we're on the bird too, so we're not really compatible with uh, Microsoft. That, that's, as, that's as big as it's going to get. Okay. Microsoft, actually. It's readable. Right, okay. Well, if it's readable, that's yeah. basically because all I want is to um, show you uh, a note to the barons, which is basically just, you can just copy it. Um, we, ask, we are concentrating on Rutland because he actually provided the best, um, the best response after David, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Malcolm Mac Massey sent um, um, a, a letters to all 25 of the barons and provided the best response, so we're asking you to send letters to them. Right, um, now I've got to get out of this and get into other 
And there it just says. So we'll just. Aren't you going to read it out to us? Um, would you want me to read that out? Yeah, okay. Right, yeah. right, okay. So, okay, so we send it by recorded post so that we have um, evidence of sending it. So you, basically what you're doing is you're, you're providing evidence for your standing in law for a day by sending, by posting this over to the uh, to Lord Rutland. So then if anyone comes after you with any demands, then you can include this with a notice of conditional acceptance, which I want to show you in a minute, um, providing your, your standing, proving that your, this is your, your, your standing. Um, so that's what it's about. So it's, Dear Lord Butland, in full knowledge of treason being committed in Parliament by delivering the sovereign people of this common law land into the hands of foreign powers, in understanding of some wrongs done by the present holder of office of sovereign, on whom I now transfer my allegiance, do willingly and wholeheartedly enter into lawful rebellion, and I solemnly swear upon my oath to obey the laws of the barons committee who invoked lawful rebellion in accordance with Article 61 of Magna Carta until such times as the address of these present ones is due. So one is described uh, by the date and you sign it. Now a lot of people do ask me, say, well look, why should I trust these parents, you know? But I'm saying, well look, these guys who stood up for the country and invoked lawful rebellion for us to use, they're not criminals. They, all they've done is they stood by the constitutional laws of the country, uh, which is now for us to use. Now, you know, this has been really kept quiet by the mainstream media, as you, as you can imagine. And so it, it didn't get out there, so, so the army, us, we didn't arrive. So you can imagine the barons, you know, they, they've got a bit sick of this after a few years. It's been 13 years now, nearly 14 years, and so the army didn't arrive. Um, and I think a lot of them have got a bit despondent, and uh, some of them have gone over to UK, which is uh, um, you know, probably the only thing that they can see, uh, uh, the only way that they can see us getting out of the world. Well, there is another way, and this is, this is like I'm saying, it takes, it, it takes us for all of us to stand by our constitution. So we're, we're standing by the constitution via the Barons Committee. So if the barons turn around and say, well, we're not supporting the constitution anymore, well, we're not supporting them, you know? We're not handing all our allegiance to the barons. They're in service to us. And this is what a lot of people don't seem to understand. The barons are in service to the sovereign, the sovereign people who are us, you know? So they're acting for us. Now, we, we need to start acting for ourselves. You know, we're the people we've been waiting for. You know, we, we, we have to start actually making, uh, make, making people aware, you know, educating people like we've been doing in the whole of Glastonbury, educating the council, educating the police, uh, all local businesses and all the people, um, and providing a, us with this process. And, right, so can I have a bit more help because I want to... Uh, David. Uh, yes. So our first step is that we should write. Our first step is to write and swear our allegiance to This is the first step, is to, to enter into law for rebellion. All you have to do is send an oath to the barons. Can right. you scroll down? It, well, you, won't, you won't probably get a reply. Some, some people do get replies. But if you don't get a reply, it doesn't matter, because what you're doing, if you record a delivery, you've got a copy of it, you've got proof of postage, so if anyone makes any demands on you in the future, you send them a copy of that and say, look, this is my standing point. Yeah. Now, I, 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 my, the best notice that I would advise to start with is the notice of conditional acceptance. It's, uh, it's not working for some reason. I really don't want to use Okay, right. Uh, so, conditional acceptance. I conditionally accept all demands that you make on me on proof of claim that those demands are lawful. That's the basic principle. Um, to, to stand by the law, you have to, you have to be honourable with law. Otherwise, if, if you're in dishonour, then you basically lose by default. So what we're doing, what, the way we deal with people is we send them a notice saying, look, I'm prepared to do what you say as long as what you say is lawful. Now you need to provide me proof, evidence of the fact that it is lawful. And of course they can't do that, so they'll either ignore you, 
or they won't, uh, or they reply to, they won't reply to your points in substance, which means to to uh, res respond to your very um, poignant points. So I'm just going to quickly scroll down on that so that you can take a copy of it. And that's that one done. How do I get on that one, Gary? Because uh, just click on that one or what? Um, well, I've got them on my Facebook group page, which is a practical lawful descent on Facebook. There's, if you go into the files, there's about 70 or 80 files there, and you can get a copy. But this is why we're putting it on here, so that you can so you have the process. If you just, we're going we're gonna to create this video. Um, well, it's on my, like I say, so we have a, a, a website which we're creating, www.lawfuldissent.co.uk. It's not up there yet, it's in its infancy, but we're trying to get everything up there um, so that people can actually check it out for themselves and um, do it. Okay, so that was the oath. Right, so. Um, okay. Uh, that's the wrong one. No, I might have been. So I cancelled that. Um, yeah. This is so professional. Can you give me the address again to the Facebook? Yeah, it's, um, it's Practical Lawful Descent. Lawful Descent, yeah. Right. Um, Notice of default and opportunity to cure. Uh, Okay, well I'm, I'm going to quickly go to this one, which is which is the one I said on the police, which is a notice of lawful objection, which I just mentioned earlier. So I'm basically saying to the, to the chief of police there, look, um, this is my standpoint. Do you have any lawful objections to my standpoint? I don't want to get into trouble with the police. I don't want to get into conflict with the police. Um, if you've got any um, problem with my standpoint, you need to let me know. So I'll just quickly run through this so that you can actually see it. So, no sort of lawful objection. So this is just a template, basic template, which you can change, copy, do your own, you know, if you want to do this. But this is basically directed at the police, or you can direct it at anyone who, uh, who uh, is dealing with you or making unlawful demands upon you. Right, so there's that one. I hope that's enough. So wait. Yeah. Um, then a notice of a notice of default. Try that one. That might just be the notice of default. But the next the next notice that we serve is a notice of default and opportunity to cure. So the chief the chief inspector wrote to me saying, oh, you well, you have to stand under the 1988 Trip Rose Traffic Act. Didn't answer to any of my points. Didn't answer my points in substance. So I sent him another notice saying, well. You must be a mistake. You must have misread my um, notice. Um, we're going to give you a notice of opportunity to cure. And this isn't the one. This is actually a notice of default, which is the one I would do after the notice of default and opportunity to cure. So I was just saying, look, this is what I wrote in my, my first notice. Please respond to that. I'll give you another chance to respond to it. I'm going to give you 14 days to respond to it. Um, again, I didn't respond to it in substance. He didn't respond to it addressing the points that I'd made. And so I then served him with a notice of default. This is all just to remain in order, to give him a chance to um, respond to, according to constitutional law, which he didn't do. And 
So that was that one. Right, and I then, I was, I was driving my, or I was travelling in my private conveyance around the town, and the devices police didn't actually bother me. I actually did get arrested eventually by the um, St. Chippenham police. And I provided them with my standing, and I would not give them closure, I wouldn't give them an address for them to pursue me. And I then served on the Chief Inspector a notice of misprision of treason. Now, misprision is section one of the 1795 Treason Act, which is that one. Okay, so if you know of an act of treason being planned or committed within or without the realm of this country, and you don't report that crime to a justice of the peace as soon as you can, then you are guilty of the, a, 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 a relatively similar crime of misprision of treason, which, is, which still carries mandatory alike imprisonment and total asset stripping under the constitutional law. And this is a notice of misprision of treason. I'm going to run just really, it's quite a long notice because it has to go into um, evidence and stuff. So I'm just going to sort of quickly um, go through it so you can actually look at it and copy it down if you want to. Uh, okay, um, get in there. Right, so this. This goes through some of the evidence uh, of how this started up, how this has um, been going to, carrying on for 41 years. Um, evidence of treason by all prime ministers since the Heath administration, and the evidence of Heath's sedition and treason was put together by a guy called David Barnby, who got all the, about nearly 500 documents from the public records office, put them together in a document called FCO 103048, shoehorned into the EU, uh, which I um, got from Albert Burgess's website, thecaseforttreason.org, and I posted this with other evidence to the Chief Inspector. Well, of course, I got no response from that. And uh, I put quite a big fee schedule on it as well because he, he, he's been he committed treason against me, you know, personally, um, let alone the country. And uh, I suffered quite a lot of uh, injustice. Well, that's basically run through that. So that's that's the hassle bit out of the way. Okay. Right. Uh, so, right. I do risk my trial. I got arrested. Um, I didn't give them closure. I do now. Um, I so I was arrested and taken to the police station and taken to the court the very next day. Um, they, uh, I was standing under duress and circumstances at, all the time. Uh, when I went to the court, they denied me all my um, notices and that I'd served, which was about twenty at the time, and. Uh, I managed to get unconditional bail by stating that I was in, I was in law for rebellion. Um, I have absolute evidence of treason and I, have, I, I demand uh, leave to, prison, um, to prepare my defence, which um, the magistrates actually agreed to. Uh, they, the prosecution witness tried to remind me because I had no address, um, but they didn't do that, quite luckily in a way. Anyway, um, so I was bailed to appear for six weeks. Um, I did actually attempt to appear while I was late, but that was, that was a bit of a blessing in disguise because uh, it's actually a double thing to go into a magistrate's court, which isn't a court of law, it's a corporate enterprise acting under treasonous legislation. So it's actually a double thing to go in there and claim common law and state, well, you know, um, this is me, why you have no right to, to make me come here. Well, what are you doing here then? You know, this is the thing. You, I, I serve notices of non-jurisdiction on the court, and uh, eventually they just backed off because um, they have no jurisdiction, they know that. 
And I also served notice of misprison of treason on the court manager and the legal advisor. I also went out to the Attorney General, who was uh, Dominic Green at the time, he's now the ex-Attorney General. Got no responses from him either. Um, but what happened was, they backed off. They, they all demands just, just disappeared. Um, because anyone that was going to take me on after this point was going to have to be doing it in full knowledge of the treason being committed. Yeah. So they would have to be pursuing me um, in high treason. Now, high, the 1795 Treason Act has not been repealed like the government tried to, um, try to tell us. If you go to the government website, they'll say that's been repealed. But it hasn't. Tony Blair repealed it in 1998, or attempted to repeal it in 1998, which was an act of treason at common law itself. Also, he committed two counts of treason before that, so he's in no position to um, re repeal anything, you know, lawfully under the Constitution. So, um, high treason is still a hanging offence in this country, and which these people know, you know. So, if you go after them with a misprisoner treason notice, or just a normal treason notice, so far, they'll back, they, they, they won't pursue him. You know, they're, they're afraid of it. I, I stated in my affidavits and my notices that I will pursue anyone that um, comes out to me on this matter. Okay. Dave, sorry, can, do you mind me asking, um, are you still able to drive? Um, well, I'm still able to act as, as a, uh, he's asking you if I'm able to drive. Well, I'm still, act, I'm still able to do so, um, but I'm going to come into conflict. Most likely with the, with, with the police who are still living in ignorance and stuff, right? Um, so, so, I mean, yeah, I can still do so, but we're gonna, I'm gonna get attacked. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get a lot of crap, you know? Uh, this is, um, you know, uh, this is what they do, so. Okay, um, oh, good. Okay, so, that's very quickly gone through this. Um, I could, I, I've done a talk on this before in past week, and I, it used to be about three hours to go through the whole process, so I've really rushed through this. Um, right, so what do we expect from others who enter into lawful rebellion? Well, it depends on what you, who, who you are, you're, whether you've got dependents, whether you're um, uh, a bit feisty like me, or you, you know, you, you, you're a bit um, afraid of the system, and there's, you've got no reason to be afraid of it. They'll come out to you, you know. Um, so, like single mothers, for instance, we would ask you, yeah, if you want to be eligible for a billing, please serve your notice. But if they come after you, yeah, send them a notice of conditional acceptance. Say, well, look, you know, is this lawful for me to take this fine or, 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 or to accept your invite? Um, and they'll have to respond to you. They'll, if they don't respond to you, then, then your notice becomes the truth in law because they've acquiesced to your notice. So if you acquiesce to a notice, um, whatever's in your notice becomes the truth in law. So we actually make law, yeah? Um, so we wouldn't ask single parents to go, uh, single mothers or whatever, to, to actually do much more than that because they're likely to send in the SS, you know, the social services. Now I'm not saying everyone in social services is bad, but we know that um, they've been stealing children and, uh, you know, acting in secret courts, with, you know, and, and stealing children by that, by that way. But you're gagging all the time people, so you can't talk about it. So we don't ask people to do that. What we do ask people to do is, if you're in a position to do it, is not to pay. Always ask questions, always demand um, answers. Don't ask them, demand them. Yeah? You're sovereign, you have the right to the truth in law. And if you know the truth in law, then you have the duty to inform these treasonous uh, people in our society, you know, in this regime, about the law. So um, this is about acting honourably, educating the police, educating anyone that comes out to you, and, uh, and, and, and standing with lawful excuse, not, not to pay into a treasonous um, regime, um, but if you do have to pay, then do so under duress and circumstances. You're still standing within the common law. You're just stating, look, I'm going to pay you because you're going to enforce this on me. You're going to, you're going to cause me loss or harm. 
So I'm going to pay you under duress, and then you're still standing under the law. So, so you're not actually going to um, end up in prison if you do it that way, right? Um, so what, one of the last things that we, what we want to talk about is to lobby the Bobby, which is how we put it, lobby the Bobby. Because, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's the right sort of um, feeling that we, that we have here. We, do, we don't want to go out to the police like I've done, because it just causes more division between us. Um, so we're asking people to write to uh, your local chief inspector or your local inspector. We have a, a, some really good cops in, uh, in Wales and uh, the street. Um, so I Inspector Nicholson is a, is a good guy. You know, I've been in contact with him. We sent him a load of information. We put all, I've uh, given information discs to all the police in Wales. And you know, they're, 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 at least they're talking to us. If I sent him with the notice from his prison trees, then he ain't going to talk to me again. So what we need to do is to get these guys and say to you guys, look, you're, you know, you're supposed to be protecting us. We, we look to you to protect us, and you're not doing your job. All we're asking you to do is to observe the truth, investigate the evidence of the truth, and then act upon it. Um, and that, that, that's the basis of what we're asking people to do here. Also, write to your counsellors. You know, ask them what their position is on Agenda 21. Because, uh, I mean, if they're for Agenda 21, this is ancillary to genocide. Uh, Agenda 21 is a genocidal plot. You know, and it sounds a bit extreme, but it, if you look at the evidence, like, uh, like Sandy has shown, it is actually about um, total control, depopulation, uh, controlling the population under 500 million. You know, this is, there's 6 billion of us, 7 billion of us on the planet. And how are they going to do this? Well, we, we, we can see that they're doing it by the uh, vaccination program. Uh, they're just, they're, they're, um, they're, in, in, in Africa, they've been sterilizing people. Gardasil, there was a Gardasil in this country, um, sterilized a lot of um, teenage girls. A lot of them don't realize this. Um, and the vaccines that they've given you all through your life can still running around in your body. Uh, they can be activated by um, ELF, Microwaves or, or um, radiation—it it can, it can, it can bring cancer into your body. It can, it can, it can, basically, these viruses are there, but they can be activated. So there, there's a remedy against the health issues as well, which is the Bob Beck protocol. Um, I don't really want to go into that, but it, it, there's loads of it on YouTube. It's very um, interesting stuff, and it does work. We have been using it. Um, I think that's about all I've got time to. To say it's a bit of a rush. Sorry about that. We're not professionals, like we said, but we're just trying to do our bit. So it's up to you guys to help. You know, we, we need to get Glastonbury in law for rebellion. We need to get Glastonbury to be the first place to reject Agenda 21. And that's going to involve you guys writing to your council uh, representative, writing to the police, saying, "Come on, guys, what are you doing? We, we, you know, we're in a desperate situation here, and we need you to help." So, if there's any uh, questions, then we've got five minutes. Um, there's a mic here, because we'd rather it was... Um, there's a question there, you can ask that. Um, yes. So, so, earlier on the agenda... Can you just... Hmm. Hi, earlier on the gen gentleman before said that basically that the police are ignoring requests for for arrests of those that have committed treason. Yeah. What's stopping a group of people making a civil arrest? Well, that may be necessary, but that may be necessary, but we, we think if we don't get the police to act, then we're going to be in conflict with the police, and we don't want that. That's going to be violent. We need the police on our side. Sorry? We need the police. We do need the police on our side. And uh, there's a lot of good guys with the police. They could take over the ports. They could take over the ports, yeah. Um, but well, I've been um, talking about law for rebellion to police constables now for the last 17 years. Now, a lot of these police constables um, behind the scenes say that I agree with what you're saying. I've got a mortgage to pay. If I go against the system, I'm going to lose my job. I'm saying, I, I know, I know the situation, but talk to your friends, talk to your mates. I've had magistrates, ex-magistrates actually supporting me in my, in my endeavours and even a high court judge quietly, but they're all in fear. What they need is people, but they need to be supported by us. Yeah. 
That's the only way you can uh, you can you, you can destroy institutional treason in the in the country is when the people stand against it. There's no other way of doing it. And Lord Fred Bellion gives us that process, that gives us that ability to do this. We, you know, we, we, we've really got to get on with this and start, like I say, lobbying the police and lobbying the local councillors. That's the only way we're going to do it. Can you, Eddie, can you pass the... I'm oh, sorry, talk? Yeah, sure, take it back. Yeah, did you want to say one more? Well, uh, yeah, thanks. Okay. I don't know if I missed something, but if the entire basis of our defence is Magna Carta, and Magna Carta ceases to exist on November 1st, where do we stand then? Well, we stand under corpus juris. We, if you start, you know, it's going to be treason to speak out against the European Union. We have to get this job done before then, or we're going to be in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Well, more information can be got um, on the Facebook group page. Um, unfortunately, that's about the only place you're going to get all the evidence and all the processes and affidavit templates. And in the, the last thing I want to say is, um, I've actually been through the protocols of Zion, which was mentioned earlier, and that's horrifying. I recommend anybody tonight to go on YouTube, the protocols of Zion, and that explains everything that you were talking about, and the world government, and uh, Capistan in the UK and so on and so forth. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, if you, if you look at um, the articles of Protocols of Zion, you, you'll see that it's running it out today. It is, you know, there's, there's, they create all the controlled opposition groups because, you know, the, the, the best way to, to um, control everyone is to have, um, is, is to control the opposition groups. Um, so we've got the research. And we've got We the People and other controlled opposition groups. I mean, 38 degrees, right? You get a lot of people signing petitions. Well, petitions are just begging. So we're sort of begging Cameron to stop doing whatever we're asking him to do. Well, he's got, we're, we're giving him authority. It's just like when we go to, when we, when we go to these bloody courts, which aren't courts of law, we're giving them courts credulity. We're giving them authority. It's double thing, and there's a lot of that about. Sorry, there's a minute, I'm just going to see. One second, please. If the if English speaking peoples are the only ones that can do anything about this, what are, are people doing in other countries about it? Uh, right, okay, well, that was a point made. Well, we, not all the, the European countries have a constitution like we do, so we're quite lucky in a way. Um, you know, the, the Scotland can also do this because um, the Acts of the Union, so they have the same. Um, rights as we do. But um, like Holland, there's, there's a big sovereignty movement going on in Holland allegedly, well, as far as I know, um, because they have a monarchy. <laughs> but there are, many, most, uh, a lot of countries in Europe don't have monarchs, so they don't have their own constitution. Yeah, so, so, so worldwide, I mean, 